Lagara behind the camera. I take care of all the animals here at Woodcock Nature Center and I'm going to give you a quick little virtual tour of our nature center. So if we walk in the door, to the left is our exotics room and to the right is our natives room. Let's head left. These are all the animals we have that are species you cannot find here in New England, which is why they are all grouped into a room we call the exotics. We've got five tanks over here and two over here and counting as always. So let's give everyone a quick hello. This is our cane toad. Look how cute he is. Cane toads are native. <laughs> you scared me. They're native to Central America, um, but they've also been introduced to parts of Florida and in Australia, they're actually overpopulated and um, running amok over there. So they would be a little confused as to why we keep them as pets here in America, but uh, we love him dearly, even though he is a bit on the shy side and would prefer to really be left alone at the moment at hand. So we will respect his wishes, but we wanna give him a quick wave. Hi, little Walter. All right, go take a bath. His neighbor is Juanita, the Western box turtle. She is uh, what I call in a meeting. She's in a meeting right now. Uh, she's actually just hungering down, trying to stay warm and figure her way through the turning of the seasons. But Juanita is a Western box turtle. She is native to Western America. These guys were once so populated in Arizona and Nevada. There were an overwhelming amount of them. Now it's a little more under control. But she's a sweet girl. And um, you can see she has a little, we call them beaks. Um, like birds do and that enables her to take bites out of her food. So whenever I feed her, she's a little leftover from yesterday that I will clean up. Um, I don't have to worry about cutting things up into an extreme bite size piece for her because if I give her a whole blueberry, she is more than capable of chomping into it herself and making sure that she doesn't take a bite that's too big. Okay, bye Juanita. Our other wall over here, this is Chubbs. He is a giant African bullfrog and he is just enjoying his hot tub in at the moment. Um, they are very sweet animals. Normally I don't disturb any animal that is on the quieter side in the winter, but I always wanna just give them a quick tap and make sure that they are doing okay and that they're just asleep. Just a good thing to practice if you keep animals that go into dormancy. So you can see he's actually a very big frog. Chubbs weighs usually two pounds and some change, um, and he is massive. Um, the giant African bullfrog is also called the pixie frog, which is an interesting name considering they are not dainty in the slightest, but they uh, have a scientific name that is where the nickname pixie comes from. It is a mouthful, Pixicephalus aspersus. So if you come across a pixie frog, it is also a uh, name for the giant African bullfrog. And he is just fine. He does this all the time. I know he looks like he's not okay, but this is what a frog looks like when it is dormant for winter. Below him are some Madagascar hissing cockroaches. There is one for you. And uh, they are from, you guessed it, Madagascar. These animals are called hissing cockroaches because when threatened, they make a hissing noise. I am not going to stick my hand in there, not because I'm worried about what would happen, but I don't want to anger them for everybody's entertainment. When they come in contact with something they feel threatened by, they make a hissing noise, but it is actually them pushing air through tiny holes in their hard exoskeleton. You can probably see them right there, those holes and when they push the air through those holes, it makes a very harsh hissing sound. So the sound is actually not coming out of their mouths, but nonetheless, they are called the hissing cockroach. And they also are just kind of hunkering down, enjoying their heat and their, each other's company. Next to Chubbs, we have Izzy. Izzy, turn around, say hi. Izzy is a legless lizard, a European legless lizard to be exact. Um, these guys are similar to snakes. They look a lot like snakes. And to the uneducated eye, you would think it's a snake, but they actually are not. She does not move as gracefully as a snake. They have some anatomical differences. And the 
Special thing about our little girl is, I don't know if she will let us take a peek at it, but she has a kinked tail, which is a prior injury that she came to us with. But we would be able to pick her out of a lineup with that tail, no doubt. She just had a shed and she is feeling good, looking good, and waiting for me to feed her. Unlike snakes that usually just consume uh, rodents or some type of uh, variety of mammal, Izzy also enjoys eggs and insects as a part of her lizard diet, right? And you like snails too. You like a good snail. All right, say bye. You got dirt on your face. Down below is the newest addition to our family. For everybody who does not know, this is our baby, Colombian red tail boa. Her name is Indira, and she is hiding her little head back there. There's her nose poking out. Indy banana, where are you? I'm not going to disturb her further, and there's a reason why. It is because she is in shed. You can see her patterning is kind of dull. It's kind of got like a film over it. And if I'm able to sort of, let's see if I can get in there and so you can see her eye. Probably not, you can see her adorable little mustache. But another great way to tell if a snake is in shed is by looking at their eyeballs. I will pull back her screen just so we can take a good look at her. There we go. See how blue her eyeball is? There's a really great sign that a snake is in shed if their eye turns blue because snakes shed their eye caps as well. That's what we call them. And um, it comes off the top of the eyeball. And as the skin is starting to lift in preparation for a shed, it comes away from the eye, which is usually dark in most snakes, and it turns sort of blue. So that, in combination with a higher film and uh, dullness to her scales, is one of many indicators that she is going to shed. She's pretty small. I will sit back so you can get an accurate view of how big she is. Super tiny at the moment. She's just a baby, about eight months old, and uh, she's going to get super, super big one day. So we are excited to continue watching her grow, and uh, I will see her through her very first shed with us in the coming week. And then maybe next week I can uh, keep you guys posted on how she looks and you'll be able to see what a snake looks like when they've just come out of a fresh shed. It is beautiful. But not least in our exotics room is Rocco. Rocco is a good old fashioned ball python. He is a basic morph. I will do one of these and let you take a peek at him. There he is. Hey Rocco. So he's just hanging out. This is what they do. They hang out in a ball shape, you guessed it. One of the few reasons why they are called ball pythons amongst a few other names. He is, there's his head. He's just hanging out. Rocco is extremely sweet, a really great uh, example of the ball python and their behavior. Ball pythons are very in your pocket snakes, very curious, very friendly, and they just want to love you and be your friend. And then when it's time for them to be left to their own devices, they do exactly what he's doing now. They just curl up and breathe. Um, very sweet. Something I would recommend as one of few species that you can start with if you are a beginner keeping snakes. Um, it depends on what you want. Some other preferences in your life, I might recommend another type, but this is one that you absolutely should consider. You may notice that Rocco is actually a bit big for this tank. I would not recommend keeping a snake, he's not full grown yet, but a snake of this size and growing in a tank this size. We have plans to upgrade him in the very near future. It all depends on our distributor and uh, of course when uh, current circumstances will allow us to uh, bring a new tank into our building for him. But it is absolutely something that we are going to do for this very sweet little boy. That was our exotics room. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a quick tour and seeing everybody. 
And um, yeah, stay tuned for our natives room. Those are animals that are native to New England and that you could find outside on a walk around here. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them below and one of us will reach out and address them as best we can. Everybody stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and um, try and open a window and breathe for a few seconds if you feel you are able to. It will do wonders for your happiness and health. All right, see you soon, bye.